Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Mystery Ranch Catalyst 26 backpack. And this is a new line that seems to be designed as a successor to the Urban Assault series of bags, particularly the Urban Assault 24, which has been one of my favorite EDC bags of the past couple of years. So I was very curious to see what updates Mystery Ranch had made with this version. It seems like they brought over a lot of the things that made the Urban Assault 24 such a great bag. So I'm really excited to share it with you. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, talk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, the appearance here is pretty similar to many of Mystery Ranch's other bags, particularly with the distinctive tri-zip opening. I really like that this has a pretty streamlined and clean appearance, so it's not overly tactical. There's no molly webbing on the outside. There's not a ton of straps or attachment points. There is some pocketing, uh, so it's a functional bag, but it's not so overwhelmingly technical that I would feel uncomfortable taking this into a more urban setting. I feel like I could get away with taking this into the office, and it's still also just gonna work great for traveling or taking into the outdoors. As far as the materials, the bag feels really solidly built. The exterior fabric is a recycled 500D Cordura nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. I've had experience with this fabric on other bags and it's always held up well. I like that it also helps keep the weight of the bag a little bit lower. It comes in at just under three pounds, which is great for a bag of this size and with the amount of padding that it has. And then you also have some well-protected AquaGuarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, like the Urban Assault 24, you do have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side. These offer a pretty good amount of space. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I use in a lot of my other daily bag videos pretty comfortably. And I was also able to fit my 26 ounce Yeti Rambler. This is probably the largest size that I would try to squeeze, particularly when the main area is packed out. These compartments do have a good amount of volume but not a ton of elasticity, so the volume itself is fairly fixed. They do stick out a little bit when they're not in use, so it might have been nice to have some elastic there. And they're a little bit different than the ones that are on the Urban Assault 24. Those were slightly deeper, and they just felt like they hugged the bag a little bit better when not in use, so kind of wish that they had maintained a similar style, but still glad to see that you have the water bottle pockets included. At the top, you have a pretty nice handle that does feel like it's been updated from the Urban Assault. Feels a little bit more robust and comfortable to hold and I like that it doesn't stick out too much when it's not in use. And then along the front, you also have the Mystery Ranch logo front and center. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 26 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and I still had some leftover space. And I like that even though the bag can hold a lot, when it's a little bit more packed out, it never feels overwhelmingly bulky. It doesn't really stick out too much and maintains a fairly streamlined silhouette, which makes it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. This is an area where Mystery Ranch typically excels. I really like how the straps have been implemented here. They have plenty of padding. It's really soft and comfortable right out of the box. On the inside, you have a breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. And the straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. At the top, you also have adjustable load lifters so that you can pull the back really close to your back and just kind of tweak how it sits on your shoulders a little bit better. And you also have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. As far as the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. You have the same type of padding that we saw on the straps. It's well distributed throughout the back and then you also have the same breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. One thing I will mention though is that even though there is some elevation on the padding on the sides, there's no air channel down the middle, which might've been nice to see to give you just a little bit more airflow to help prevent sweat from building up as quickly. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty minimal. At the top, you have a really great quick access pocket that is gonna provide pretty impressive amount of volume. So even if you have some bulkier items, they'll be able to fit in there comfortably. At the moment, I have a Tom Bin Ghostwell pouch with some smaller tech and EDC items. I have my GoPro. I have my sunglasses with their bulkier hard case. 
and I also have my AirPods on the inside of this compartment. No other internal organization. You do have some mesh that kind of allows you to see down into the bottom. Um, can't open that mesh. There's no zipper or anything like that. And then you also have a lanyard with a little carabiner that's gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. Up next, we have the laptop compartment. And I really like that this is separate from the main area, which makes it really easy to access your device. This was something that I always loved about the Urban Assault 24, so glad to see a similar layout here. Very well protected zipper. And one thing I forgot to call out with that first zipper is you do have these loops on either side of the zippers that will make it easier to open and close. I imagine you could also use these to maybe secure some of the pockets if you bring both of the zipper pulls over. You can probably uh, use a lock here or at least put the zipper pulls through the loop to make it a little bit more difficult for a pickpocket to get in and out. And so taking a look inside, this is a top loading compartment. Doesn't open up flat or anything like that. Regardless, it still feels really easy to get your laptop and tablet in and out of this area. You do have a dedicated spot for each. Currently at the moment on the front here, I have my iPad mini fits in there very easily, but you could definitely fit a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet. You have this padded sleeve that separates out the two sections, and then you have the laptop sleeve on the back, which should be able to hold a 15 or 16 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Currently, you can see I have my 13 inch MacBook Air, but there's plenty of leftover space at the top, and this opening is still wide enough to get a larger device in and out. And I like the amount of padding that's on the sleeve and that both of these sections are suspended off the bottom of the ground. So if you place your device in there, it's not gonna make contact, which is always a really nice feature to have in a laptop compartment. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. It does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. And with the amount of padding that's offered here and the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground, it really feels like your device is gonna be well protected while you're on the go. And then moving into the main compartment, this is a tri-zip style bag as we've seen with many of Mystery Ranch's other bags that we've featured on the channel in the past. So it's a pretty interesting system in general. You have the ability to just rip open this top lid so that you can access it as kind of a top loading bag if there's something from this area that you wanna be able to reach quickly. You don't have to open the bag all the way up. But then if you wanna get some additional visibility and access to the lower areas of the bag, you have the zipper that comes down and allows you to see the full capacity of the compartment. And so pretty simple open space in general. I'm a fan of this style of bag because it matches up well for the bulkier items and pouches that I tend to carry with me. And so diving into what I have here in this main area, I have my drone with its hard shell case. I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. I have a packable rain jacket, and then I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, one liter there at the front. I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, two liters. And then because this is a 26 liter bag and I had some extra space, I also have this uh, tech pouch from TomTuck just to kind of help fill out the volume at the bottom and to showcase how much I can actually fit in here. And so now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. With the amount of volume that this offers, this could work quite well as a minimal travel bag if I wanted to toss in a compressible packing cube, a dop kit, an extra pair of shoes. I could definitely use this for a weekend trip. In this main area, you do also have some built-in organization. On the back, you have an updated layout to what was on the Urban Assault 24. So there's some extra sort of pockets and bands here that you can use if you don't have as many pouches, if you have smaller things that you wanna be able to grab more easily or you don't want kind of just floating around. It's nice to have kind of a variety of things to use here. First up, you have this really kind of larger and deeper slip pocket. Some of the Urban Assault bags had a deep pocket on the side, so it's just on the back here. This may be a good spot for another water bottle, an umbrella, additional pouches. So you can see that it, it has enough volume to hold some of the other items that I had in the compartment. This is a good example of why I don't typically use these sort of slip pockets because it creates the sort of bulging as opposed to letting me uh, put everything flat which is how I prefer to organize, but still nice that that's there. It kind of just stays out of the way if you don't want to use it. You also have a couple of elastic bands. You have two on the bottom. I don't know if you can see those there. And then along the top as well, you have just three additional bands. This is definitely the type of spot where I would typically put 
flashlight, a pen, maybe a pocket knife or some dongles or cables, just things that I would typically have in a pouch. And then behind that you have an additional slip pocket that is gonna be a good spot for something like a mouse, portable hard drive. In my case, I just have a deck of cards there to showcase the depth and size of this pocket. And then behind those, you have another slip pocket. This one is a little bit larger and deeper. So it's good for something a little bit flatter, like a notebook, a magazine, maybe an additional tablet. If you're carrying that, I didn't really place anything in there because you have the two great sleeves in the laptop area. And then on the sides, you have additional mesh zippered pockets, which I really like these as they give you a good amount of volume. So they're still gonna be able to handle some larger accessories because they're mesh, you can see on the inside. And then it just keeps these things near the top so that if I'm opening this as a top loader, I can easily reach these pockets here. So in this one on the right, I have my mouse as well as the anchor wall adapter that I like to carry with me, charge my laptop and tablet and phone. And then on the other side, very similarly sized compartment. In this one, I just have a portable battery to keep my phone charged. And then in the middle, you have one additional mesh zippered pocket. You can see in here at the moment, I currently have a lightning cable for my phone, as well as a wired pair of headphones that I like to have with me as a backup. So really like the amount of organization that's provided in this main area, as well as the space, and just the overall design of this bag. As I mentioned in the intro, I really liked the Urban Assault 24, and so I'm glad to see that this kind of updated version maintains so many of the things that made it great. It looks really cool, and if you need a versatile, spacious, and comfortable EDC bag, then this is gonna be a really great option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Mystery Ranch Catalyst 26 backpack. You can currently purchase this on Mystery Ranch's site for about $180, so definitely a bit of an investment, but it does feel like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and build quality that it has to offer, and it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is Mystery Ranch's District 24 backpack. Mystery Ranch, of course, has just a really wide variety of awesome bags to pick from. And the District 24 was one of the best bags that I tried out last year. Uh, you know, it just came in at a very reasonable price point and had a more kind of urban look than some of Mystery Ranch's other bags. It has a more traditional clamshell style opening, an adjustable divider in the main compartment, external water bottle pockets, a nice organizational layout, comfortable harness system. So it just checks off a lot of the boxes for what you'd be looking for out of a versatile EDC bag. It's also offered in a few different sizes. So if you like Mystery Ranch's comfort and quality and you want something with a little bit of a different layout than this, that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is the Evergood CTB26, which is one of my favorite bags of all time. I just really love the organizational layout on that bag. It's got a clamshell style opening all the way that the pockets have their independent volume, really makes it easy to load the bag out and take full advantage of the space. At 26 liters, it's pretty similar in size to this. It feels a little bit bulkier, boxier, and wider. So that's something that you'll have to keep in mind depending on your height. The harness system on that is also comfortable, but it's not as adjustable as the one on this bag here. So something else to kind of keep in mind if you're looking at the CTB26, but if the sizing and the harness work well for you and you're just looking for a really rugged bag with a great layout, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Air Pro Pack 24 liters, which has a little bit of a different aesthetic and vibe than this. It's a much more minimal and techy looking bag but just a really great release that came out earlier this year. Comfortable harness system, you know, really breathable. It's got a luggage pass through, external water bottle pockets, clamshell style opening. So it just checks off all the boxes for what I'm normally looking for in an EDC backpack. The laptop compartment is one of the best that's on the market. It's suspended, it's well padded. You just have a lot of great organization for your tech. And at 24 liters, it's a little bit smaller than this, but it can hold a pretty impressive amount. So if you're looking for a comfortable and durable bag that's gonna have a more minimal and maybe office appropriate aesthetic, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. With that being said, the Mystery Ranch Catalyst 26 holds up really well against all those bags. And if you're looking for a durable and comfortable EDC bag that's gonna give you plenty of space and that also has you know, just a great layout with the Mystery Ranch tri-zip opening, then this is gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. 
And I'm curious to hear what you all think of Mystery Ranch's new Catalyst line and how it compares to some of the other popular EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank Mystery Ranch for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.